when we create new routines, it creates change. And I need you to understand that if we want to change our mindset, you have to change your, your, your life. Like changing your mindset changes your life, but you also have to change your life to change your mindset. Create new habits, create new, new ways of doing things. And, and that takes time. And I'll, you need to realize right up front, all change is hard at first. It's really messy in the middle, but it's really beautiful at the end. It's kind of it's kind of like a garden, because rule number two is destruction. When you plant a garden, after you create the plan, you start to till the ground, right? You start to tear up things. You start to tear shit up, and when you're tearing shit up, it's a lot of work. The hardest part of planting a garden is when you're tilling the ground, you're you're pulling the weeds, you're you're building the raised beds, whatever it is. That's the hardest part of doing the garden, tearing rocks out of the ground, preparing the soil. That's the hardest part. That's when you're out there with your shirt off and sweat, and your muscles are glistening. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but. <laughs> But that's when we're at, you know, like that's the hardest part. It is hard at first. All change is hard at first. And I think a lot of people don't ever even really get through rule number two, which is destruction of or the letting go of or the 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 um, disempowerment of ego, the disempowerment of your old thought life, of your old habits. We don't typically get through those because it feels really hard to create the new habit. And, and, it, and it, this part is like, feels the hardest. And so very few people ever step into a rule three. They ever step into planting seeds. Most people don't even get that far. I, you know how many gardens I've seen? People started tilling the ground. And I go by, you know, in the summer and the tiller's still out by the, by the field. They never finished tilling it. They started tilling the ground and tearing it up and removing rocks and doing all that stuff. And they just got tired and they quit. And I could not tell you how many people stopped. They abort their dreams, their visions, and all the beautiful creative processes of their imagination because things were a little hard at first. Things felt a little hard. Now, step one of the secrets to getting through this the hard part that all the change the part the rule the, the the second part the second phase which is destruction one of the secrets to that is make it fun make it fun somehow this is again stewarding our imagination like a child can have all kinds of fun playing with rocks playing in the dirt we're not thinking about trying to get to the end. A child's not thinking about trying to finish the project. He's so consumed with the dirt and the grubs in the ground and the, the soil and the worms crawling through it and the rock, throwing rocks at his buddies and stuff. Like he's so consumed with that that he doesn't see that it's so hard anymore. And so find the fun in it, find the play in it. Find it, be excited about the change. Be excited. L look, look towards what the garden's going to produce and start getting excited about that instead of seeing how hard it is. And, and so we have to prepare the ground of our mind. Part of preparing the ground of our mind is, is tilling it, pulling up weeds. It's removing negativity, removing negative thoughts, removing things that, that aren't healthy for our mindset or that are interfering with the vision that we have, the things we want to create, the, the passions of our heart, removing things that don't empower that or stepping away from relationships that aren't encouraging that and empowering our visions and dreams. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Follow your heart, follow your passions, express yourself. We're one with everyone, but that doesn't mean we have to continually live in concert with someone or try to live in concert, live in a, a vibrational state, hang out in a vibrational frequency that is pulling us away from the things we're most passionate about. That is keeping us from exploring life. No, tilling the ground, that's the hard part. Sometimes it sucks ass to let go of a relationship that's tearing you down. Letting go of attachments is tough. 
at least feels tough. It's actually not hard. I've used this analogy so many times before. It's harder, it's more work to hold this pin, to carry this pin than, than it is to let go. Beth and I were chatting, I think it was a couple of days ago, and she said, I, I really, today she was, she was having an emotional moment and I was encouraging her through it. And then she said, uh, she said, well, today was, you know, I, I really felt good. I feel like I let go of some things. And she goes, it was, it's really hard letting go. But once I let go, it feels so good. <laughs> Freedom's right there because you're, you're letting go of all this baggage that you're carrying. You're carrying all this weight, these burdens. And when you let go, it's like a million pounds is off your back, right? So letting go is powerful. Um, letting go of programming programming it's we don't realize all the areas that our mind is programmed the concepts that we believe that's true that we've accepted as reality that's programmed and kept us hindered us kept us kind of imprisoned and hindered us from expressing our truest nature so the four realms of the of the of the kingdom of the inner world of the kingdom are really it's really simple it's it's mind or, or the, your brain your mind your emotion your spirit spirituality and and physicality your physical body and a lot of times we don't think about the physical body but the physical body is just an outlet of your inner reality you know i've said this many many times there are very few ugly people in this world very few but when you run into an ugly person I'm going to tell you 99.9999999% of the time, it's because they got fucked up insides. Like they are a mess. And their energy actually, physically, they are drained. I was, so I was uh, bouncing recently. I, was, I decided I wanted to be a bouncer for a couple of days just for shits and giggles. So I went to a local club and I, I uh, asked if I could help out, and, 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 and so I've been balancing every once in a while and just did it a couple of days and, and might do it soon again, but just for fun. And I'm ID'ing, they put me at the door. He said, you're really hot, you're sexy, so all, all the ladies are going to love you. You might get raped, but he said, here, I'm going to put you at the door. So he puts me at the door, and I'm ID'ing everybody, and women are coming in, and they're like, well, you don't need to, you know, you have the wand, I'm wand, and I'm checking them for weapons. She goes, you don't need to use that, you just frisk me, baby. I don't know how many women told me that. Anyway, that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> I was like, you, I might frisk. <laughs> but anyway, um, have fun. Have fun. I could not tell you, Benjamin, how many people I saw and look at their ID and I'm like, they were like 28, 29, 30 years old. And they looked all of 55. I could not tell you how many people I was like, what the going on? You look old. The vast majority of the people that I did looked way older than they actually were, not younger than they actually were. There's only a couple that I actually ID that were, I was like, dude, you're doing what girl or girl, hey, look at you. People are, are, there's such a mess on the inside. Their, their mind is so out of balance. Their emotions are so fucked up and it's being expressed in their body. We're, we're, we're living longer because of the technology that we have around us, but we look older than ever. You go to Okinawa, a little, little place in Japan, you know, there's this entire Okinawa report, like back in the 1980s and 90s, they started really studying the people of Okinawa. There's not even that much technology out there. There's not a lot of social media or anything else, but people are living in their hundreds and they're healthy and they're active and all that. They're just, it's, they're just healthy, but it's healthy mindset creates a healthy body. So physicality and, and, and vice versa, healthy body actually fuels the mind. You get your, your mind moving. It actually makes your mind uh, less bored and less, Slide, it quickens everything. It releases positive chemicals through your brain and positive signals through your brain. So it changes everything. Anyway, those are the four pillars or the four realms of the kingdom within. And when we're talking about planting a garden, the garden of your mind, it really is impacting all four of these. Okay. I'm talking about a very general sense 
but it's impacting all four of these realms. So one of the one of the other things we're doing in this phase or in this phase of gardening is we're enriching the soil. Once you get it all tilled up and you, you get it all planned out, we're, we're enriching the soil. One of the ways that we enrich the soil is that we do things that excite us. Today, what did you do that excited you? What was the one, one thing that you did today that really excited you? And now listen, I, one of the mantras of my life is bring the joy. I want to bring the joy to everything. And, and so it doesn't matter how mundane it is. I want to bring the joy to it. I want to have fun with it. But I'm talking about like going and, and flowing into something that you're, I'm not talking about just doing something mundane and bringing the joy to it. I'm talking about really the, the thing I'm passionate about. It excites me. This is so much fun. Or I played, and I did something new for the first time and it was awesome. Like, what did you do today that excited you? Because that's one of the ways that we prepare the, the soil. So if I, for instance, am working in, a relational part of my mind and a relational garden, if you will, I want to do the things that excite me relationally. So I will find my lover or a friend or whoever it is. And I go to these and I'm saying, okay, let's do something fun. Let's do something exciting. Let's do something new. Let's, let's discover something together that's fun and new and, and, and enjoyable, right? This is what I mean. But you're intentionally doing this, these things. You're intentionally this is how we enrich the soil. The, another thing is practice, practice of letting go, letting go of some things and some ones. We always have something we're attached to. And, and I'll, oftentimes I cannot tell you how many times I have let go of the concept that is Beth only to discover there was some new thing there that I had to let go of. And so we're always in the practice of letting go, letting go. And because the more we let go, the more we're able to love, especially when it comes to people. Let go of the people in your life so that you can love them. I've said this to you guys for years, that the people we love, we hold very loosely. Practice letting go. Practice letting go. The, the reason why letting go seems so hard is because we fear the unknown. Because we get really comfortable with people. We get really comfortable with our jobs. We get really comfortable in our relationships. We get really comfortable with the amount of income that we have coming in. We get really comfortable in life. And we fear if we let go of that, what would it look like? If I pursue my dreams, well, Silas, I can't pursue my dreams because if I pursue my dreams, man, you know, like I'd have to stop my job or I'd have to quit this or I'd have to, you know, man, that's scary, man. I don't know if I could do My God, instead of being afraid, be excited. Fear and excitement are so closely related, dude. Like, embrace it. Embrace it. Go after it. This is why we're here. You are not here to just work a job, make an income, work five days a week, party on the weekend, man. You're not here. Like, you want to talk about aging? That's the best way to age real quick. You're right? like, like, grind away. And now we have side hustle. Everybody's got a side hustle. It was funny when I finished bouncing. That first night I finished, I did it. And they said, well, so, wait, how much, how much did they say they were going to pay you? They were giving cash, you know, paying me under the table. They said, how much did they say they were going to pay? And they said, I said, I never asked. I said, well, you didn't ask how much you were getting paid? I said, no, I don't care. I, mean, I just did it for shits and giggles. I was just doing it for fun. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, no one's ever come to that club before and been met at the door by somebody as happy as me. <laughs> you know, by the doorman. I'm like, what's up, guys? Come on in, man. Hey, just park it, park it right over here, dude. Let me, I'm going to wand you. And, you know, I'm like looking at the IDs. I'm like, fake. I'm like taking the wand and beep, 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 doing beep with my mouth, you know, turning it off. And I'm just fucking with everybody. I was having so much fun. So much fun. Have fun. Prepare the soil of your heart. Attachments equal being stuck. Attachments in the words of Buddha are misery. So let's practice letting go of them. Every time you see a little area in your life where you find frustration, irritation, aggravation, this is an attachment, the result of an attachment. Let go. Sometimes letting go of those attachments feels really difficult, but practice it anyway. Make the choice to let go here. Make the choice to let go and move on. And some of letting go is creating new habits. It's changing the way that you're approaching someone or something so that you can more easily do that because you can't let go and but and still follow the same direction, do the same things every day.